my name is Anne van der Rest, and I talk about music, yes. I'm trying to rock my musical theatre niche on YouTube. Emphasis on trying. So I couldn't not have a video about the new Mean Girls movie musical. And yes, I know, there's already a bajillion video essays about it on YouTube. But I live in a place in the world where the movie only just released in the theatres. And if you're wondering what that god-awful place is, it's Belgium, a small little town in the country of Europe. Now I gotta say, y'all were not that nice. Like, almost everyone gave the movie bad reviews, which made me go in with the lowest of low expectations and... Call me crazy, but... I kinda liked it. Was it a masterpiece whose impact will change the movie musical genre forever? No, but I liked where it was heading. See, the problem with movie musicals these days is that people find it unnatural for characters to start singing because we've come to expect a level of realism when it comes to the medium of film. But my counter argument for that is always, oh, so you're still waiting for your letter from Hogwarts? <laughs> Bit nervous about this year's reaping then. You trust Baby Yoda will save us from Darth Vader or whatever happens in that movie? The problem's not the singing. The problem is the context. Movie musicals are like regular movies their younger sibling. They're trying too hard to copy them, instead of actually developing and embracing their own unique style. Take movie musical Hairspray, for example. No one struggles to believe characters are singing in a world featuring these hairstyles and John Travolta as an obese mother. And that's exactly what I liked about the newest addition to the Mean Girls collection. They actually lean into the fact that it's not realistic by giving most of the songs this music video feel. Note that I said most of the songs because some scene to song transitions were rough AF. But does that mean that the latest version is the best Mean Girls yet? Instinctively, I want to say nothing will ever beat the OG because I was its prime target audience when it came out, so I've watched it so many times that it's literally congealed in my frontal lobe. It's like it's part of my soul. Some might say it's a horcrux. But then the stage version was the first show I saw on Broadway, so a lot of emotional connection there as well. The 2024 film has Renee Rapp absolutely eating world burn, which I guess depending on the cast that you had, that could also happen in the stage version. But my point is, they all have their strengths. The only way of finding out who the queen bee is, is by doing the maths. Where do the three differ and which one makes the stronger choices? For once and for all, let's settle who is the Regina George, who is the Gretchen Wieners, and who is the Karen... What's her last name? <laughs> Wait, what? Does she have a last name? Oh my god, I feel like such a fraud. Fake fan alert over here. Smith. I didn't know that. I think. Oh, okay, and in the 2024 version, her name changes to Shetty. That's why I was confused. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Also, I am aware that the film is based on a book called Queen Bees and Wannabes, but because it's non-fictional, I've decided not to include it into the competition. And because I can't read. Oh, and we're also ignoring the sequel, because gross. Racers, start your engines, and may the best fugly cow win! Okay, so right off the bat, we get hit with a huge change between the film and the musicals. The film starts with Katie's parents making sure she's ready for her first day of school, whereas the musical starts with Janice and Damien singing Cautionary Tale, thus informing us that the POV has shifted. In the original film, Katie is our narrator, whereas in the musicals, Janice and Damien take on that role. A choice that I genuinely struggle to understand. Having access to Katie's inner dialogue gives us a deeper understanding of her actions and her transformations. I feel like we understand the dynamics of Girl World more because of how Katie is experiencing it. In the stage adaptation, Janice and Damien return sporadically as the narrators, but never really give us any useful information. And then in the 2024 film, they basically just cut all these parts out, which makes Cautionary Tale just stand out like a sore thumb. So even though I think it's a great song, the point has got to go to the OG. The next change is quite an insignificant one, which makes it even more weird that they bothered to change it. But in the original, Katie leaves Africa because her mom gets offered tenure at Northwestern University. Whereas in the stage adaptation, they go back home because her parents lose their funding. I don't know, is it a bizarre attempt at raising the stakes? They came to their senses and changed it back in the recent film. Points for the films. Also, Katie doesn't have a dad in the musical movie. Budget cuts much? <laughs> it's true that he didn't add that much to the plot, but still. It feels kind of wrong to allocate points in this subject matter, so um, we're just gonna move on. 
Okay, we're excluding the OG for a second here, but what the fuck is up with changing It Roars to What Ifs? It Roars is such a good song. It instantly paints Katie as this go-getter, someone who doesn't let her spirit get crushed. What Ifs basically makes Katie come across as this meek little weasel. Or is that because of how Angori sings it? Is that how you say her name, by the way? Angori? Angori? We can't blame it all on her. The lyrics are generic, the melody is boring. A point for 2017. Next on the agenda, we have the relationship between Mrs. Norbury and Mr. Duvall. In the original film, we can see them kind of flirting the whole time, whereas in the 2024 film, they're married. This apparently because Tim Meadows, who plays Duvall in both films, always wanted them to get married, so it's a cute little Easter egg. But cuteness won't get you the trophy around here, okay? Because really, actually, Mrs. Norbury being newly divorced just adds another layer to how horrible it is that Katie basically accuses her of drug dealing. Even though I love love, the point has to go to the OG. Another subtle change is that the German class turns into a French class in the musical versions to set up the joke of Damien being called Chanel, Fantine, Lady Gaga. I guess they couldn't make work on a stage. Honestly, neither of the jokes are really funny, so no points here. Everyone's a loser. Get in, we're going shopping. Then there is the Danny DeVito joke that gets cut from the movie musical. I guess it's because the writers are trying to steer away from making jokes about people's appearances, but I agree with the argument that a lot of other videos made, which is the mean girls aren't mean enough anymore. I like the DeVito joke. Does that make me a boomer? The song Where Do You Belong gets cut from the 2024 film, which I hate because I would have loved to see in Jaquel Spivey's version. Minus a point 2024. <laughs> However, the groups in the cafeteria are no longer specified by their ethnicity, so that is definitely a step forward. <laughs> but a point will be deducted from the movie musical because Gretchen Wiener's her hair is not nearly big enough to be full of secrets. Hairdresser, you had one job, come on. <laughs> The movie musical decides to cut Gretchen's and Karen's verses in Meet the Plastic, and I understand they do it to dial up the mystery and sex appeal surrounding Regina George, but that means we don't get My name is Karen, I may not be smart. That's it. And I consider that a hate crime. So Broadway gets the point. Katie's bracelet does not make an appearance anymore in the 2024 film, yet again robbing Regina of an opportunity to be freaking mean. Lame. The buttered muffin survey turns into a guessing of the bra size trick. Uh, no opinion. The person who decided to change, you can go shave your back now, into Shane having a high pitched voice, really has a lot of explaining to do. Point for the OG, no doubt. We get to calculus class where we meet our heartthrob Aaron, who in the 2024 film is played by Joey King. <laughs> Please comment down below if you see it. I honestly cringed so hard at Bryony's performance in that first scene. Is this what Gen Z is attracted to these days? Who the e-boy legacy lingers on. Points for the other two. Okay, so we have arrived at the song Stupid With Love, which caused major uproar on social media. Because in the musical movie, they decided yet again to turn down the oomph on Katie's character, potentially adjusting to the limits of Angori's voice. Hey, don't get me wrong. I think being completely paralyzed with a crush is a very valid and exciting choice, but um, Storytelling 101, we need a shift. We need a transformation. Something needs to happen. I don't know, maybe a moment where she gets taken over by her sexual desire, you know? I am filled with calculus. Such a good lyric. Completely ruined by the 2024 subdued version. Although I really like that they used the medium of film to paint this romantic picture with the rose and the swing. There's only so much polishing you can do. Your baseline, the song, kind of sucks. Point for the stage. Next up, we have Regina's mom. More precisely, her boobs. In the OG film, she has hard rock boobs, which gets emphasized by her chihuahua chewing on it without her even knowing it. But all of that just gets completely scrapped in the musical versions. I think yet again, because the writers don't want to make fun of people's bodies and their chosen modifications. At first I missed it a bit, but then upon reflection, I actually don't think we need the joke. We understand enough who this character is simply by her trying to fit in with the girls. Also, extra points for the 2024 film for absolutely nailing the casting of the moms. Busy Phillips and Jenna Marbles. <laughs> Jenna Marbles? What a comeback. Busy Phillips and Jenna Fisher not only resemble the girls, but also deliver a banging performance. We love to see it. We've arrived at the burn book. And with it, the ever-changing description of Janice. In the 2004 film, she simply has the word dyke written next to her. In the stage adaptation, that becomes space dyke because Janice panics when Regina confronts her about being a lesbian. And so she says that she's an alien who has four butts. 
sure. In the final one, Janice is known as a pyroless because she puts Regina's plushie and then her backpack on fire. This pyromania is added to the plot to make it believable that the parents would consider Janice as the problem child and give her therapy. I get the pyromania, but at the same time, I feel like it's a lot of extra fluff for not a lot of reward. So points for the OG? Question mark? Well, I can't give it to the space alien with four butts now, can I? In the 2024 film, the song What's Wrong With Me gets prompted by Gretchen finding a music box in Regina's closet, and... Yeah... Was the director ill that day? <laughs> like, why is nothing happening during the whole song? I'll tell you why. Because they should have cut the song. Out of all the songs they had to cut to get the running time down, they decided to keep this one. I never really liked this song, even in the stage adaptation. Although it is a nice touch that Regina's mom sings a reprise. But yeah, I don't think we need a whole boring song to emphasize the insecurities of teenage girls because the whole show already conveys that message. So point goes to the 2004 film for not having the song at all. <laughs> because of technological advancements, the three-way calls between the plastics get cut from the later versions. Unfortunately, they didn't replace it with something similar, which is such a shame, I think, because those scenes are so indicative of the mind games and the hierarchy of the plastics. Plus, we miss out on cult classics like Boo, you whore. Point for the OG. Another random change is that in the 2024 film, Janice is all of a sudden a sewing artist. This because the writers think Gen Z doesn't connect with drawing? I don't know. Oh. Seeing 2024 is already so far behind points wise. We'll just let it be. So then we have Halloween and the whole Regina manipulating Aaron into liking her a bit again. Which stays the same across every version because we need it to propel the story. Love that Janice and Damien are watching the same film in 2024 as they are in 2004. Go on, you can get a point for pandering. And thus we arrive at the revenge plan. In the original film, Janice cuts holes in Regina's shirt in an attempt to embarrass her, but that completely backfires when it becomes the new fashion trend in school. This gets replaced by Janice turning on the sprinklers at some undisclosed ceremony, giving Regina the sexy wet look, which yet again backfires and becomes a new fashion trend. I guess they changed it to be more up to date with pop culture nowadays. I think it's way funnier and more indicative of Regina's power that the most random thing, like the boob holes, end up becoming the new fashion trend. So I'm giving the point to the OG. Then we have the whole cheating debacle. In the 2004 film, the trio comes up with the most elaborate schemes to make Aaron discover the cheating. In the end, Katie tells him when he refuses to kiss her. This gets replaced with a text in the Broadway version, which in 2024 gets replaced with a voice recording that Katie shares with Aaron because she's such a good friend. I feel like the point goes to the OG because I feel like they really utilize this moment to show Katie's transformation. Instead of trying to protect Aaron, she blatantly acts out of self-interest, showing that she has fully become that biatch. But then I guess that moment of becoming full biatch also happens in the musicals, just a bit later down the line, in the you can't sit with us scene. So it's a tough one, really. You know what, everyone gets a point. I'm feeling generous. Time for the Christmas talent show! The stage version decided to cut Damien's song, What a Fucking Joke. And although I love Damien's rendition of You Are Beautiful in the 2004 film, the point has to go to 2024 for the French version of iCarly's theme song. <laughs> the original Jingle Bell Rock gets replaced by Rocking Around the Pole. I'm assuming due to copyright issues. No points given until further notice. Now, each version has its own thing that goes wrong during the performance of the plastics. In the original one, the music skips and Katie saves the day by starting to sing. Maybe that's the moment Tina Fey had the idea to turn it into a musical. In the stage adaptation, Regina's skirt drops and in the latest film, Regina falls out of a lift. Although I like that in both the musical versions, Regina ends up having this really embarrassing social media moment, I do feel like they miss this element of Katie saving the day. This lays the foundation for her eventual rise to the top. Because without it, really, why would the plebs not just start admiring Karen or Gretchen? Point for the OG! Okay, so I'm jumping between timelines, so I don't really know if it makes sense to mention this here. But let's talk about Karen. In the 2004 film, she gets sexualized a lot by putting her whole fist in her mouth, touching her boobs to tell the weather, and all of that gets scrapped out of the later versions, which... I do think is the right choice seeing she is a minor. But then they still include comments like the fact that she has slept with 11 people or that she wants to show her bra in her costume. So I don't really know if it's that much better. I guess because those are things that she decided to do, it is empowering. I find it a hard line to walk. No points here. Then comes the infamous She can't sit with us scene. But we've already spoken about that, so let's move on. In the stage adaptation, we then have the song Fearless, which gets cut from the 2024 film. 
which I have mixed feelings about because I don't really think it's that good of a song. But at the same time, it does help to explain a bit why the people see Katie as their new queen bee. Also, the stage musical just really needed an act one closer. And this one's a really high energy one with amazing choreography. Whereas obviously the films don't have intermissions, so they don't need an act one closer. I think this just comes down to different formats. You know, apples and oranges. There's no point in comparing. In the OG film, Damon rigs the spring fring... <laughs> the spring fl... In the OG film, Damon rigs the... Sp oh my god, I can't say this. In the OG film, Damien rigs the Spring Fling Queen nominations, there we go, I said it, to include Janice and Gretchen. In later versions, Gretchen is just nominated by herself, which makes a lot more sense, you know, that the popular girl gets nominated. Points for the musicals. Then we have another cut song from Damien. God, why do they hate Damien so much? Well, let's be honest, the song Stop is kind of a filler song just to have a little bit of tap dance. So I do get it. Points to 2024. In the musical, Katie fake cries to get out of a trip with her mom to Madison. I think this is a genius choice because it showcases that Katie is now manipulating everyone around her, including her mom. Whose house is this? Whose house is this also falls victim to the slaughtering of the soundtrack, which is a choice that I would make as well. Poor Kevin Napore, by the way. His part just keeps getting smaller and smaller. In the original film, Gretchen thinks Katie's in love with him. But then when he rejects her, he ends up with Janice. In the stage version, at least he got a song. But then in the 2024 version, he got nothing. That's showbiz. The next song on the chopping board is More Is Always Better, which... I really miss, to be honest. I like that part so much in the stage musical because it shows that Katie and Aaron are actually forming a genuine connection, you know, something that goes deeper than just a teenager crush. Points for Broadway. In the OG film, Katie then vomits on Aaron, which gets cut out of the other versions. But I kind of liked it because it really ties in with the whole word vomit thing, which I believe gets mentioned like a little bit in the stage musical, but it's just completely cut out of the 2024 version. Call me gross, I'm gonna give the point to the OG. After the party, when Janice confronts Katie, Damien's car gets transformed into a scooter for the stage adaptation, and then they just decided to keep the scooter for the 2024 film, which I think is hilarious. Points for the musicals, and we're back to the burn book. Oh, World Burn is just such a good song. Honestly, I'm gonna give the musicals points just because they have the song. Thank God, by the way, that the whole underage relationships between Coach Carr and the Asian girls is scrapped. Minus one point for the OG for ever even thinking that was funny. <laughs> In 2004, Regina takes copies of the burn book and spreads them around the school. The stage adaptation follows suit, which is a bit bizarre seeing they've already embraced the social media element in the show. But then in the 2024 film, they just forego the copies and just do it all via social media. So a point for 2024 for being environmentally conscious. Another point for the movie musical for Tina Fey who pretends to start singing because oh my god, that moment made me lol. So the next whole bit where Miss Norbury makes the girls apologize and then Regina George gets hit by a bus and then Katie comes to her senses and owns up to writing the burn book is the same in pretty much every version. The next difference, however, is in the 2024 film where they choose to add a scene where Katie confides in her mom and asks her to stay until she falls asleep. Yo, that scene made me cry for reals. I guess we all just need our mom sometimes. Points for the musical movie for the emotional release. Then we have the Spring Fling slash the Mathies competition where 2024 definitely gets points for the best cameo ever! Just in case some of you haven't seen it yet, I'm not gonna spoil it because I loved that it was an absolute surprise for me. The movie musical then swaps the song Do This Thing Out for a reprise of Stupid With Love, which I can see work as a redemption song. Unfortunately, they mashed it up with What If, so yeah, I really can't give a point, I'm sorry. Now in the OG film, this is the moment where Katie realizes that putting someone else down won't make you feel any better, the core message of our film. In the musicals, however, she has a somewhat vague epiphany at this point because the whole putting others down speech has already been said by Miss Norbury at the assembly. Which is one, too early in the story, and two, way less impactful because it's not our protagonist who's saying it. We, the audience, learn it by Katie learning it. Point for the OG. In the stage version, Aaron gets caught out for living out of district and so has to graduate as a homeschooler. This somehow makes him Miss Norbury's assistant at the math lease competition, which allows him to fall in love with Katie in her truest form as a math nerd. I feel like this is a bit unnecessary. Katie owning up to the burn book should be enough for him to fall in love with her. Points for the films. Oh yeah, and Katie is banned from Spring Fling in the stage adaptation. Whereas in the original, she's grounded. And in 2024, she decides herself she doesn't want to go because everyone hates her. By far the stronger choice in my eyes. 
point for 2024. The musicals revive a cut scene from the original film, a scene where Regina and Katie make up in the bathrooms. I love this scene because it really humanizes Regina and it gives us some closure. In the stage musical, Aaron kisses Katie outside of the spring fling, which at first when it was happening, I was like, uh, what the fuck's going on? No, the kiss is at the end. But then later on, I realized that that meant that the story could end with the girls reconnecting and uplifting each other. Highlighting that the moral of the story is about sisterhood and not about romance. Yay, point for the stage adaptation. In the musicals, Janice and Damien reiterate the whole putting others down speech. You know, for the dummies who didn't listen the first time Miss Norbury said it. Yeah, a bit unnecessary in my eyes. Point for OG. Then the OG does this weird thing where Janice and Damien try a kiss, only for Kevin Napora then to swoop in. And then we understand that this whole time she's been Lebanese, not lesbian. I still haven't made my mind up on whether or not this is offensive. Please share your thoughts in the comments if you even made it this far. And then the OG film finishes with a where are they now segment. A bit unnecessary, but then they fake another bus accident with the new plastics, which is kind of hilarious. So it evens each other out. Okay, so the results are in and it turns out that 2024 is the best. Who would have thought? Not me. But let's be honest though, some differences were definitely worth more than one point. So give or take a few, it kind of all evens out. So each version is good in its own way. Ah, So cathartic, as that just so happens to be the message of Mean Girls anyway. The versions can coexist, so just get off their dick. If you like what you see, subscribe. If you don't like what you see, subscribe. If you need to eat food to stay alive, subscribe. And if you support Trump, fuck off.